Okay, in this lesson we're going to look at an overview of the Google Cloud storage system. Now I'll show you some of the high level features of the storage system and then I'll run through a quick example of how you can create a bucket and upload some files and do a quick a couple of quick operations with the system. So let's go ahead and get started. All of the concepts in the Google storage system revolve around the concept of a storage bucket. Thankfully, to create a storage bucket is really simple in this system. You really only need to declare three things when you're creating a storage bucket. First, you need to declare a name, which is globally unique, and that's globally unique across the entire Google Cloud platform. A location, a default location for your storage um, bucket to be contained, and that's a region that we discussed earlier in this class. And, and a storage class, which defines a lot of the attributes of the storage bucket itself. And we'll go over the, the differences in the storage classes in the next slide. Currently, Google offers four storage classes for the storage buckets. They are multi-regional, regional, nearline, and cold line. And when you go from the top of the chart to the bottom of the chart, they really go from a very high availability scenario to cold line, which is the lowest uh, in terms of availability. It's also the cheapest in terms of cost. So let's go through each one of these. The multi-regional is the most expensive storage option and it's used for frequent scenarios, frequent data access scenarios such as a website <clears throat> serving up content, video, anything like that. And uh, its, its price is $0.26 uh, dollars, uh, per gigabyte per month. The next down on the list is regional which is really storage. A good scenario for this would be data for data analytics, for example, that's only utilized in one region. It's not being served up across multiple regions or worldwide. So uh, it's next on the price list on down and it's uh, $0.02 per gigabyte per month. Next on uh, in, in the offering is the nearline uh, storage. It's really for infrequent use and uh, it has. you'll notice that it has a 30-day minimum storage requirement. Um, but it's only uh, now half as much then as the regional storage and it's um, $0.01 um, per gigabyte per month. <clears throat> Last is the cold line storage uh, class. This is good for data that's rarely used at all. So I included uh, a, a common use here might be for a disaster recovery scenario. It is by far the cheapest uh, option at $0.007 per gigabyte per month and it also has a 60-day uh, minimum storage as well. So in addition, um, if you look around on the Google website, there's actually a, a decision tree that can take you through um, a, a kind of a question and answer type thing, and, it, and it'll help you determine the best storage class uh, for your particular application. So after you've created your bucket, you can assign security access controls to the to the bucket. You can create folders, subfolders, uh, you can secure uh, just parts of the folders. You can also make uh, the entire folder uh, access to be public. You can do all the typical editing operations you can do on any storage system. You can update, uh, drag files to it, delete uh, buckets. You can copy buckets. In addition, one of the nice things about the Google Cloud is you can tag a particular bucket to a project for billing purposes. So Google has a really granular very robust billing system so that you can track all kinds of things uh, if you're working on multiple projects. So really good for a large organization or a, a corporate uh, type of environment so you're trying to track cost uh, across multiple projects. You can also use the GS utility um, from your uh, PC if you have the cloud uh, tools installed on your machine so you can copy uh, from a local machine and access the storage from the command line. There's also an extensive XML API for accessing data from applications. So whether it's a, a .NET or a Java application, you can interface with uh, storage files uh, in, in the Google Cloud. In addition, they make it really nice that there's a built-in transfer uh, service to copy data in from the Amazon S3 storage system. So Amazon is a very common, um, commonly used storage system out in the market today and Google has built in some services to help you not only migrate from S3 but also coexist with S3 as well. You can synchronize files uh, from Google to Amazon. So a large corporate um, 
entity may have uh, accounts on Google, Amazon, and Azure. So they may have multiple uh, cloud offerings um, to meet their needs. So it's nice that they've built in some uh, uh, built-in capabilities to, to uh, uh, interact with Amazon S3. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and do our demo. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my Google Cloud Platform account. And once I get there, I'm going to go ahead and go to the console. Once you get to the console, go ahead on the left hand side, you'll notice the storage option. So I'll click on the storage and it defaults to the browser. So you notice I already have a few buckets already defined and I'm going to go ahead and create a new bucket. So this is what the process we talked about earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. And I said earlier that the name has to be unique across the Google Cloud, Cloud Platform. So, so right there, if I put in demo, notice that I already had one before. And if I change it to demo one, I can do that. So I'll go ahead and select it to be a regional bucket. And US Central is my default region. So I'll just go ahead and leave it at that. So now I've created a bucket and it's ready to go. You can just drop files in from the file system. And what I'll do in this case is I'll copy in just a couple of files uh, from my local file system. So uh, uh, first I'm going to create a, a, a new folder uh, and I'm going to call it Socks. Um, my son and I actually have a, an eBay business as well, so we sell socks on the side. So if you're interested in buying some stance socks, uh, uh, this is a place to get them. Anyway, so I'll copy a few images into uh, the new folder and just a couple of um, JPEG files. Um, let's see, we'll go ahead and select maybe just three of them. They're, they're pretty big files, but so I'll <clears throat> go ahead and select these and then you'll notice that when I drag them in, you'll see a progress bar update. So like I say, they're pretty big files, but once they're uploaded, then you can set uh, individual file permissions with each file. Uh, you can delete them, uh, you can rename them, you can do all of these different things that you could typically do on any file system. So uh, the browser will just show you real-time updates as, uh, as the files are being uploaded. So you'll notice that once we hit 100%, <clears throat> you'll see them pop into the browser with the file names. So in addition, um, there's a browser for different file types. So for these JPEG images, if I click on one, it'll actually render that in a separate tab in the browser. So, so these are all finished now. Uh, I can go ahead and um, dismiss this dialog and we'll go ahead and see what some of these socks look like. So uh, these are pictures from our eBay listings. So, so now that I've done that, <clears throat> um, again, you can, um, um, you can manipulate the, the files in different ways. Um, you can browse through them, you can rename them, you can copy them. Here's an example, we'll just delete one. Uh, pretty simple and straightforward to use. And really, if you're not gonna use the bucket anymore, you can just go ahead and, uh, and delete it um, once you're done. In addition, if you wanna change uh, an option, for example, you wanna change the uh, bucket permissions or the default storage class, you can change it from regional to a, a different storage class. So I'll, I'll let you go ahead and mess around with that. But um, I'm done with this part of the demo. Quick and easy, delete the bucket and you won't be charged for it anymore. Okay, that really does it for the demo portion of this. Uh, Google really offers a complete storage system. Uh, lots of options, lots of built-in features. Uh, if you've used Amazon S3 before, it's a very familiar process, or if you're coexisting with the Amazon S3, um, there's built-in tools, not just to copy files, but you can sync them back and forth as well. Pricing for the cloud storage system is a very inexpensive. Cloud storage in general is cheap, and it's getting cheaper all the time with uh, all the increased competition in the marketplace. Uh, particularly the, the really low speed or cold storage, um, if you're looking for a scenario for your business to enter into cloud computing, this is probably the best place to start with cloud computing is to start with things like offline storage, backup, disaster recovery. Prices are extremely inexpensive and actually if you're a corporation you're going to get cheaper prices than the list prices uh, that, that they publish. So really a good place to get started. So um, thank you so much. Uh, this rounds out this part of the lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks again.